Hi, everybody. Let's just uh, give it two more minutes before we officially start. I'll be also doing a roll call later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Stay in the line. Thank you. 60% connecting. <clears throat> 70. Please wait. Live on YouTube. Wow. Streaming now. We're now on YouTube. Okay, so far from the participants for this program, we do have the two MCs, which is myself. My name is Jace, and also we have Ms. Roma. For our guests, we do have Ms. Perlene and Saki san. So let's just wait for the other two before we officially start, okay? Streaming now. We're now on YouTube. <clears throat> okay, let's just have a quick roll call again. Um, let's just check if everyone is here. So, Miss Kerline, Miss Misaki. Hi. Yeah, hi. hi. So, nice I guess you. we're, yeah, nice to meet you again. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> yeah. And I guess we're just waiting for Mr. Doms and Mr. Uh, Ryan. Mr. Mr. Ryan, yeah. Okay, so how are you feeling right now? Good. Good. Kind of wow. nervous. <laughs> kind of nervous. How about Miss Chase? I share the same feeling. Yeah, <laughs> we. It will be a good discussion, everybody. I know for sure. I hope everyone has like, you know, your glass of water beside you so that you can just drink or maybe have a quarter break because it will be really a lot of discussion later. Mm. I have it here too. Let's have a toast. Take it again. <laughs> Mine is cute. <laughs> oh yeah, that's pink. <laughs> yeah. Miss Kerlin, how is the weather in Japan right now? Oh, I'm so surprised that I think summer is coming early. Oh. Uh, it's, it's hot today. So it's quite unusual. Uh -huh. yeah, it is. 31 degrees this lunchtime. So I was really surprised. Wow, pretty hot. Pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi, Ms. Roxy. Ms. Roxy. Kailan? Red yan? Uh-oh. Okay, yes. So, guys, if you're, it's not your turn to speak, you can put yourself on mute. Thank you. Okay. So, we're just waiting for the other two. Okay. Stay on the line, guys. Thank you. So you were, oh, someone is playing the music. <laughs> like I can really hear a lot of things. <laughs> so Miss Kerlin, you were saying a while ago that this lunch, it was 31. Yeah, 31 wow. degrees. Yeah, it's pretty hot. It's hot. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. unusual actually. Mm -hmm. Because 31 degrees happens usually between June. Mm-hmm. Not in May. It's actually just second day of May and it's 31 degrees. So I'm a bit afraid of Japan summer this year. Mm, the summer yeah, it is might coming. Be. Yeah. <laughs> what about Philippines right now? Mm. Uh, Philippines right now is still really hot. Nothing changed. Oh, it's hot. I, yeah, it's <laughs> no. really hot. Like, what, what, what's something new? <laughs> what's new? <laughs> yeah, of course. 
<laughs> you will be surprised. But I'm gonna for... tell you. Yeah, if I'm gonna tell you, then Philippines it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> With snow. <laughs> <laughs> for me actually summer in the Philippines is better than summer in Japan oh really yeah because summer Wait, in Japan is that. very dry it's really dry oh, in Japan so, really summer. so it's really hot mm. well actually oh. I'm sorry actually Miss Jace is in United States so she's really <laughs> in a very cold country right now <laughs> Yeah, but I share the same feeling as Ms. Perlene and Ms. Aki-san that I, I think it's really global warming. Uh, yeah. The seasons are coming in earlier. Yeah. So for some, it's an early summer. For some, it's actually an early rainy season. And then, of course, for our country, the Philippines, it's much, much hotter. So yeah. I do hope everybody stays safe at home. Stay safe. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. And enjoy. Mm. <laughs> Although everyone's missing the beach, it's safer at home <laughs> for now. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> but I also found uh, found a way to enjoy myself at home, like doing yoga or cooking you know oh wow. you can do some stuff at home yeah you're still able to do active stuff even if you're at home not as active as before but yeah quite <laughs> active are you still looking forward to summer though mm, not really <laughs> <laughs> how about you miss Berlin? are you looking forward this summer <laughs> Same with Misaki. No. <laughs> if I'm in the Philippines, I can say yes. But since I'm in Japan and the oceans are really far, so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's not that exciting. <laughs> I'm, I'm just well, quite curious. In Ikasuga, is it in what prefecture? I mean, is it far from Tokyo? Kasuga. Yeah, it's far. I'm in Aichiken. The oh, big ah. city closest to me is Nagoya. Yeah. Oh, okay. What is something interesting in, in your place? Like, are there a lot of beaches there? Or... Oh, is it like car, right? No. I'm in the mountains. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Is, it, is that where uh, Toyota car is made? Like, there's a factory um, of Toyota, right? Yeah, there are so many Toyota factories around. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So we also have now uh, with us uh, Sir Dons, am I right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Hi, Sir, Hi Dons. Sir Dons. Yeah, so <laughs> it's difficult, like, because in my mind it's just really discussion and I, I don't need <laughs> to prepare a formal, uh, but I'm worried how the, <laughs> how the listeners can catch up because I just talk, but not they. They cannot see or mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. Well, all I can say, Sir Doms, is that that's the reason of this program implementation. We will work things out, and we will do our best to have a healthy and fruitful conversation. So don't worry much about it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no problem, <laughs> Sir Doms. So we're door. just. <laughs> Wow, you did your research so oh. prepared. I don't That's know good. what to do, really. Because <laughs> if, if, no, if we can mm -hmm. flash in a slide, three to five slides, at least mm -hmm. you know, the listeners are guided on mm -hmm. what my what I'm talking about. Or, I But if, if it's just a uh, discussion, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm um, reacting. I, I just need to react to the input of somebody else, so that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For now, uh, Sir Dom's that will be okay. But you know, that's something good to consider in our future sections. We're in. We will be flashing additional information from our guests. But for this beta testing, what we have is good enough. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I understand that you will give a. Uh, a brief introduction of, mm -hmm. of what the question is about and yeah mm -hmm. yes definitely but, 
Mm. Don't worry, Mr. Doms. We will give you an introduction of what's going to happen next. <laughs> 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 we will not just put you right away and answer a question without knowing nothing, without knowing anything. Of course, we will give you an introduction. Yeah, I know. I, I, I downloaded the, um, that Gen Z and Gen Alpha infographic by Mark Rindo. Uh -huh. Okay, I mean, <laughs> no problem, three dogs. So, what were we <laughs> after? <laughs> Yes, we do understand. And um, of course, we want to maximize this session with you. And we will do our best to do that. Okay. Okay, so for now, um, everybody, we're just waiting for another guest. So if you could kindly stay patient and stay on the line. Thank you. Is my volume okay or do I need to use this? It's totally uh, fine, Mr. Don. I can hear you. Yeah, it's okay. It's, it's okay. okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello, good afternoon once again. Oh, hi, Sir Ryan. Uh, how about my sound? Is it clear? Yeah, it's okay. It's clear. Thank you. Hey, so I guess we're now complete. Just looking into the guest list, we have... Sir Dom, Sir Ryan, Miss Perleen, and Miss Saki-san. Am I correct? Okay. So no, no comment means all good. <laughs> so yeah. again, again, hello everyone. I'm Jace. I'm hello, Jace. hello, Miss Jace. So I guess we're all ready to start now. Okay. So start, Miss Jace. Oh, yes. Uh, again, to everybody who uh, is not familiar with me, I'm, my name is Jace. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Rama, and I want to welcome you to this Grand Line Online Salon. So in this program, we, we, we will feature several issues that will allow our speakers to share their expertise. And the students who are also part of the audience will be given a shared part of questions at the end of the discussion. Yes. We will be asking them about the main topic and at least two speakers will be given time to state their point. Just a friendly reminder to everybody who is on right now, kindly set your microphone on mute unless it's your turn to speak. Thank you for your cooperation. 
Well, I guess I'm feeling that everyone is, is excited. So let's get the ball rolling. Well, as we move forward, a new generation is commencing. And I'm very curious of things that we should and could expect from them. Yeah, you're actually right, Ms. Jace. And we actually call this generation the Generation Alpha. I don't know if you heard about this, but basically these are the children of millennials, according to Forbes. Researchers used the early 2010s as the starting birth year and mid 2020s as ending birth year. In 2018, we saw the first group of millennials children enter the primary school system. Yeah, actually mentioning that, Jays, I'm really curious right now and at the same time excited to talk about the education system of the new generation. In today's discussion, we will talk about the useful educational system for Generation Alpha. Oh, without further ado, let us introduce, officially introduce our guest speakers for today. Let's welcome our first guest, Mr. Dominador Dizen Mango. He's an education program specialist at Death Ed Central Office and a training specialist at the Southeast Asian Ministers of Education Organization Regional Center for Education and Mathematics. Mr. Mana was a Mex Japan scholar and currently works as a specialist in the Research and Development Division at Timio Rexham in Kanaan, Malaysia. Hi, Mr. Mango. Well, hello, our next, you. hello. Hi, good afternoon. So let's go to our next speaker. Let's also welcome Mr. Ryan Catillo. He's a master teacher too at Department of Education, Division of Ilo Ilo. He received the Outstanding Research Coordinator Award as a research advisor during the second National and Science Engineering Fair in the year of 2019. He also received the most outstanding teacher award. Let's welcome Mr. Ryan Catillo. Hi, sir. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Hi, sir, Ryan. Hello, Mom Days. Hello. Let's also welcome Ms. Carleen Boba Gilia. She's an author and a former assistant language teacher. She graduated from the Lyceum of the Philippine University. She also co authored a Christian book entitled. Kaya Kupabes, and other lies I tell myself. She's a mother of two kids, Frances, eight years old, and Annika, four years old. They are based in Kasugai City, Japan. Hi, Ms. Carleen. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Pleased to be yeah. here. Yeah, hi. So, of course, our last but definitely not the least, let's welcome Ms. Misaki <laughs> Motohashi. She is a high school student. She's the finalist of the World Scholars Cup in Yale University in 2019. She studied in Japan from elementary to first grade of junior high school and currently studying in the Philippines and will go certainly to Armenia. And mind you, ladies and gentlemen, she has a personal website flashed on your screen right now, which you are very free to visit. Check it out and know more about her. Let's welcome Miss Misaki. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet oh, you. I'm so excited to do it. Yeah. We are too. We are too. Thank you. So this is really going to be an intriguing sharing of thoughts. And I'm really looking forward to hearing everyone's opinion and expertise. How about you, Ms. Roma? Actually, we do have mutual feelings about it. I don't know about our audience, but I share the same feeling with you, Jace. Generation Alpha has not completely entered the scene yet, and we don't hear much about them, but I'm so much wondering, how will the society handle or cope with this new breed of learners, which is legitimately, I can say, very challenging and very interesting because expectations are quite beyond the bar. Yeah, that's true. That's really true. So let's find out more as we begin our first discussion. So if... Okay, so by through our first question, what do you think is the most important element of education for generation? As you may know, this generation is dubbed as the glass generation because they're born with glass fronted devices that are solely the main media of communication. So in terms of education, what do we have for them. Let's start 
by asking Mr. Dom's opinion. Mr. Dom's? Hello, thank you, Ms. Jace. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, the question is really very tricky and a very difficult one. Uh, the fact that I belong to Generation X, and <laughs> we are talking of Generation Alpha. So now uh, I am not biased about uh, the Generation Alpha or the tech uh, Tavi kids or the tech thumb uh, generation today. But um, talking about education per se is the very broad and the people have diff different views on it. Uh, some, if we go back to the uh, that's why we, uh, the question is the most important element is <laughs> very, very difficult. <laughs> okay, so going back to uh, definition of education, what is education in the first place? Some will define as the acquisition of knowledge, skills, values, beliefs, and habits. Other definitions is the act of uh, imparting or acquiring specific knowledge or skills. Others would be the development of abilities. Other definition would cover developing the power of reasoning and judgment. If I go back to John Dewey or John Dewey in 1916, he defined education as a social process, a process of living and not a preparation for future living. So this definition is quite intriguing. We Parents, teachers have that idea of education as schooling, imparting, transferring, transmitting information, knowledge, skills, values, cultural attitudes, and all those. So, and another definition also of education is to bring out to draw out from the children what is in their minds, not to pour in. So there is that misconception among educators as well, now that we really have to clear of what education is. No? So I guess um, literature would say that we need to have a holistic education, though the world today is technologically advanced and uh, really influenced by technology, but we still have to educate the children holistically. What I mean is, of course, intellectual, huh? but also emotional, social, huh? spiritual, um, physical, and uh, so, they, they should not be only uh, TQ or technologically intelligent, but we say IQ, EQ, you know, or emotional quotient. They should have a high uh, spiritual quotient, you know, physical uh, quotient, and all those intelligences. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now, um, since they are living in the 21st century, we have what we call 21st century skills. Now, the, the education sector, the schools are moving towards developing 21st century skills. And I believe it is now embedded in the, curric the national curriculum of every country. Um, when we talk about 21st century skills, 
literature would say that they can be divided into three broad skills, um, learning skills, literacy skills, and life skills. So, and in these three broad um, domains or dimensions of 21st century skills, I think the most, uh, the educational system should strike a balance of these four domains. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about lit, um, learning skills, we talk about the four C's. Mm -hmm. So teachers have to design lessons mm -hmm. for children to develop critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, and communication. So now moving to literacy skills, this is comprised of information literacy, media literacy, and technology literacy. And the last dimension of uh, 21st century is the life skills. Some people call it soft skills. Uh -huh. It includes leadership, flexibility, curiosity, uh, initiative, leadership, social skills, flexibility, decision-making, uh -huh. empathy, you know, peace, compassion, freedom. Okay, so I believe that we need a holistic education, even if this generation alpha are technologically driven. As teachers, we have to look at students holistically as a human being, as a social person, and that you know, we have to develop the total personality of the child in the, the schools and acknowledging the power of technology in their education. May it be in school or out school, may it be formal, informal, whatever learning opportunities they have. But we should not be sidetracked with um, technology as um, a powerful influence um, or a factor in their learning. No? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I still believe no, that they have to go through rigorous um, process no, of um, um, discovering themselves mm -hmm. no? yeah. through the usual no, academic rigor. No? And uh, of course, teachers still, I believe, that are still very important and they are not, um, I, I mean, they could not be replaced. No? Teachers are mm -hmm. irreplaceable. No? I, mm -hmm. I'm not being biased, but uh, I, I believe that uh, teachers have a great role in producing a holistic children. Uh, and now we are living in a globalized society so we have to produce a, a global citizen no, for that matter, that the children should not be only for himself, for his family, no, <laughs> but for the country and the whole world no, in general. So I believe yeah. no, that it's um, the, the essence of uh, 21st century education. I think... Uh, May I stop in there? <laughs> no problem, sir. Actually, I, I do have a very interesting point of view, uh, Mr. Dong. Um, as you were actually explaining earlier, the development of the current and future education should not be limited with the change of tools that we have. Exactly. That the, the main star will still be the efforts of our dear students, and of course, the collaboration of our great teacher. So in your case, I'm just curious, what is the concept of the current holistic education that could we should focus more on? Perhaps let's choose, I know that earlier you said it should be like a global approach, but we cannot deny that there are many cultural backgrounds that we should consider 
that it is still, it could be uh, too ambitious to generalize everything as of the moment. So for now, when it comes to Asia, what do you think could be a more of a main focus when it comes to the holistic education approach? Um, when I say holistic education, schools, of course, um, academic, no? and each uh, country have their own content, or of course, the content of their curriculum is based on their national development goals, no? economic mm, goals, yes. or, or technological goals for that matter. So some schools, academic, plus the, some specialization, like they focus oh. on like entrepreneurial education, no? a business approach education. I see, yeah. And mm -hmm. some have specialization on uh, sports. No? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Some have um, for the start. concept. No? Yes. yes. So, but the essence there is still the, the foundational subjects, the core content, no? have to be there mm -hmm. plus the, the uh, specialization which um, the school would focus uh, on top of uh, the the national curriculum uh, mm -hmm. whether it is a private school international school no, or for that matter ah i see so when it comes to economic inequality that's not more of a focus it's more of the focus of the goal, rather than having it having a consideration, be it for the poor or the rich, or a specific country. It should still depend on what the focus of the country is. So, like, be in an industrial concept or a creative concept. Is that what you're saying, Sir Doms? Yeah. Yes, because um, the schools are directed by the um, educational goals of the country, whether mm -hmm. for, for economic development or to produce um, more scientists. Huh? Mm -hmm. Ah, very interesting points of view, Sir Doms. And I, I will be uh, asking more of you, uh, more of that from you later on. But at this point, I would also want to ask the points of view of Sir Ryan for the same question. Sir Ryan? Yes, Mom Jace. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, oh, I, I think you're on mute button, Sir Ryan. You could turn it on. Okay. I can hear you now, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, very clear. Good, after, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we'll talk about the first question. So Generation Alpha means children of millennials. They are digitally thinker. They are literally the 21st century learners. The most important element of education to this generation is that education would be the instrument to use technology. Technology has been their way of living. It helped them communicate their ideas and connect their interests. Um, through through this, the use of technology for proper communication, promote collaborative practices, deal with problem solving skills, develop creativity, and use it for enhancing critical thinking to innovate technology that are helpful to mankind. Alphas learn by doing. They explore technology using smartphones, gadgets, iPads, and applications. They use touch buttons exploring technology. They are dependent on Google Assistant, Siri, or Alexa, assisting them in school and home activities. Through constant research-based evidences, they were able to surpass the technological progress of their ancestors. They have used to interact with content and demonstrate mastery in a lot of ways which previous generations have failed to do so. Generally, regardless of generations, we should ensure accessibility, quality, and inclusive instruction for all. 
that's all thank you ma'am thank you sir ayan uh, truly yes, um on most parts i really do agree that i do agree that when it comes mm. to the generation alpha these are the ones that i would say the most connected yeah. uh, i hope only little agree it, but <laughs> i would say technologically immersed uh yes learners. exactly uh, yes so so most of them may claim that uh they could be like the most educated or sophisticated generation correct correct they can live without their like you know without the assistance of their parents they just only depend on the technology on how you know their what do you call that daily activity evolves yes yeah definitely when it comes to being independent this that's is something what, that they are not unfamiliar with yeah that's what as what i have emphasized we should always consider the inclusive instruction even in this generation inclusive this it means education for all so we, we there should be no uh, child left behind with that mm-hmm. well i do understand that as uh, ryan but i'm a little curious um it it's kind of conflicting we are in a way trying to train them to eventually be independent and yes we still want a little dependency when it comes to okay. giving specific instructions how do you think that we could balance that for our students or for the future students i i get my i can hear you again 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 uh, so earlier i was saying that uh, it's a little conflicting idea because we're trying to teach them how to be independent Yeah, but then right. again but then again we're giving another instruction that you should still follow us right, right, right. in my okay. case th- there should be uh, what a balanced use of technology whether if it is oh. need, in need or not but if mm-hmm. it's uh, not all the time we depend on technology because technology doesn't uh, think of us right <laughs> like computer So we have yeah. to consider that that not all technology that is the product of science can uh, give what we want. So obviously mm-hmm. we have to balance everything, the negative and the positive way of the use of technology uh, mm-hmm. in relation to generation alpha for for ah. this kind of learner. So in your opinion, sir, when do you think is enough of technology? Um, enough if it. Uh, Uh, critical thinking is already not used enough if uh, it affects your physical body because of too much use of it okay mm. so i think the best thing to use is um the pros and cons of the use of technology so b- mm-hmm. balancing the use of it we have the time mm-hmm. to use it properly if it's needed but if it's not needed i go for traditional one Oh, well, definitely that's going to be a hard thing to tackle. Not only should it be left with the educator's responsibility, but I guess every support system that a student should have. <laughs> okay, like like what we are doing today, uh, mm-hmm. face, uh, it's a virtual instruction only, but I do believe mm-hmm. if we can have face-to-face instruction, I think the better way to have uh-huh. teaching lessons face-to-face more than this kind of, of conversation. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. We should be all open for different kinds of initiatives. Thank you very much, Sir Ryan. And again, thank you yes, so ma'am. much, Sir Dong. Yes, okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. As we move al- as we move along, okay. Um, I really appreciate the excellent points of view. Well, uh, I guess surely I would say it opened my mind to different aspects of learning. It truly depends on what works. and most visible to be reality. Let's keep the momentum and go to the next one, Ms. Roma. Oh, thank you so much, Ms. Jace. It's just, you know, a lot of things to ponder on from your discussion. Well, this time, let me ask you this question. So let's go to our next question. Do children still need to practice handwriting with paper or is information and technological literacy a must for survival? Well, ladies and gentlemen, since this generation is now glass fronted, as they say, how advanced should writing be? Or should we stick with our traditional pen and paper or be flexible enough to move on to an alpha version of learning? Um, I want to know your points about this, Ms. Kerlin. 
Oh, hi, everyone. Um, I really learned a lot from the previous uh, speakers. And I really want to back up what Sir Dom shared about education, that it's holistic. You know, I'm speaking from, uh, my opinion comes from being a mother and an educator as well. So say, I was very happy, you know, I took down notes because I really support <laughs> children still practicing using pen and paper because, you know, writing is a combination of learning experience wherein your mind, your body are involved in the learning process, you know, like what Sir Dom said that learning should be holistic, you know, it involves the mind, the heart, and the body. That's what holistic means. And I hope there are so many mothers who will, uh, who are listening today that, you know, this generation, the millennials actually, really uh, depend on teachers as the primary educators of children. Wherein, we, when we will go back to history, it is actually the parents who are the primary educator of children you know in handwriting it you know not not nobody can exchange that experience that your mother or a father is holding your hand guiding a child holding a pencil and teaching you the strokes the right mm -hmm. strokes you know nothing you know nothing can replace that the ipad the touch uh, you know the apple pen cannot replace that experience you know because in learning relationship is really important that's part of the holistic education. You know, you learn because you trust the one who mm -hmm. is teaching you. And if we will, uh, I'm not against, you know, the Apple Pen and the iPad, but the, the traditional method of practicing writing is really irreplaceable. Because when you, you know, the, the trend today is parents are so busy and they use technology to be the babysitters of their children. You know, it's... It's a hard truth that everyone needs to swallow mm -hmm. because I'm also guilty about it. But, you know, that's why there is that progress of technology. Every day, there are so many new apps that children can use for learning, not because it is really needed, but because parents are getting lazy and lazy every day. Yeah. Can I hear an amen? I was actually saying uh -huh. amen, even if I'm on mute when Sir Dom is saying yeah. that education <laughs> is holistic. I was actually saying amen and amen because that's really true. Because, you know, when you remove that relationship in, in a kid's learning experience, what you put into that will not blossom up. Because there is a big generation now who are, who are experiencing depression. They, they are, you know, in deep apathy. Mm -hmm. They have no sense of purpose. Because most of the time, technology removed so many elements of education. Because of technology, I'm not demonizing technology, but let's be honest that most of the technology, the iPads, the tablets that parents are giving out to their children, removing so many ele elements of education that will help to boost the learning capabilities of their children. So yes, it is to answer the question, I still support and it is needed to encourage your children to practice handwriting with paper. And to answer uh -huh. the next question is, oh, do you want to add anything? It's okay. So oh, I'm, I'll answer the second question. Oh. Is is in? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, nothing. Go ahead, Mr. Okay, I'll proceed. Go, okay. go. So I'll proceed to the next question. Go is ahead, information and tele technological technological literacy a must for survival? This question is actually tricky because. I'm confused about the word, the word survival, but I will tackle information first. Mm -hmm. You know, almost people now live in the internet. You know, our diaries is our Facebook news feed. And there is, I think, two generations who do not know how to discern what is a fact and what is an opinion, what is truth and what is fake news, you know. And I think it is really a must for children nowadays to be trained, you know, the critical thinking part that not all you see in the internet are true, you know? Mm -hmm. And that element of um, learning is very important because when you grow up, what you believe, what you believe will affect how you live, you know? So children nowadays, actually, even the teenagers nowadays, even my age, you know, the 40 years old and 50 years old, they can't, define, they can't uh, discern what is true and what is false and they'll just share it. And especially here in Japan, you know, the, 
when there is an issue, toilet tissue shortage, it was because mm-hmm. of an SNS that went wild that uh, the factories from China are closing and there will be no e- tissues for the next few months. So many people bought so many tissues. And, you know, there's no critical thinking. It's just a text messages. And there are so many people who are struggling about, I know Sir Dom should relate about copyright issues, you know, the copy and mm-hmm. paste, and they will post it on Facebook and just CTTO without any knowledge who really posted it, if that is really a valid information. So, yeah, it is a must, not for survival per se, but it is a must for you to be able to, you know, how to cope up with so many information around you, not just to ingest everything that you receive. And when it comes to technology, I'm really amazed how Japan, as Japanese and as an individual, is really behind about technology I'm, I don't know if Misaki observed that, but, you know, at schools, uh, I had this experience when I was an assistant language teacher. I used their laptop and I was just typing normally, you know, my normal type speed. And they were so amazed that I'm typing so fast. And then I realized that there is no computer subject at public elementary schools. So most of the students just know how to use iPads and tablets, but they really don't know how to use laptops and computers. So, you know, when you're out in the field, it is really essential. Even the Japanese teachers, they really don't know how to navigate laptops too well, and they need to be assisted. So those kinds of technology is, I think, a must if a child or you need those uh, technology for your future. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that would be my input for today. Wow, thank you so much, Ms. Kerlian, for that very wonderful sharing of your own experience. I don't really, I cannot really share a lot because I don't have yet a kid, but I'm just wondering, yeah, I'm just wondering how do you supervise your kid? Because you are an educator, a teacher, and a parent as well. I'm, I just want to know, and how do you supervise your student or at the same time your kid's progress when it comes to learning? Do you also, like, when it comes to your kids, are you all, like, also, like, 24-7, like, checking on them? What kind of information are they discerning from the internet? Um, Actually, when it comes to education, I actually give more priority on motivation Mm. of the purpose why my child needs to go to school, why she needs to study, because... Most of the children today just go to school because they think they need to go to school and they don't know why they need to go to school. Um, Mm -hmm. It is actually one of my, one of the challenges when I was still teaching English. These kids actually are listening, but you can see on their faces, they are not really interested in learning English. Mm. Mainly because they are, they have no motivation. You know, they don't have plans to go abroad and they think that they really don't need English. They just Mm -hmm. listen to me because they need to listen. So Mm -hmm. I actually explain to my children why they need to learn the things that I want them to learn. And I'm not Mm -hmm. that typical teacher that you you do this, you do that. that. I, I actually explain first why they need this information because that is really necessary because no matter how you pour out your effort your knowledge to your child if they don't know the why of these things that you're giving them they will not absorb it so yeah i'm not going to technology but yeah for the parents that's my biggest advice Uh, you should pour out why you, you are doing and why they need to do that yeah, uh, well, yeah, I totally, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I couldn't agree. I totally agree with what you said, Miss Kerlin. But you were talking about a while ago, you said Japan is quite behind when it comes to technology. Uh, so I'm just curious right now is since there is like a modern way of learning, are there also modern tools when it comes to teaching or recording student progress? Are there also modern tools or modern systems being used by teachers right now when it comes to recording or checking the progress of students? Um, I think it's different. I could only speak from um, elementary level because I, I thought before at an elementary school, uh-huh. the, the, they can only record the progress of the children, not by numerical grades. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, it's only a circle and a double circle and an X. Yeah, that's how mm. the grading system works. And um, they're, they're actually quite exposed to some technology. They use television, mm-hmm. different kinds of media at school. 
But mm-hmm. however, in Japan, uh, the grades are actually not necessary in elementary school. That's why even if you don't go to school often, you can graduate until grade six. But mm-hmm. good luck on your senior high school because if you will not pass the entrance exam, you can't study. You can't go to uh-huh. university. So yeah, in Japan, um, I'm actually quite, you know, I think you already saw that meme that in Japan, uh, kids don't have exams until grade yeah. four. Yeah. Actually, that's not true. Yeah, oh. It's not true. <laughs> yeah. Um, they take exams as early as grade one, but the grading system is really different. It's not numerically based that you pass and you don't. They just put a double circle and a single circle and an X. So, yeah. Mm, thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much, Miss Curlin. Well, let's go with Miss Misaki. Um, how about you, Miss Misaki? Are you comfortable with these modern tools in learning? Okay. Do you I'll- like it more? Or you want like the traditional way of learning? Okay, uh, since I am a high school student, I would like to comment from the perspective of students. Um, like the question, which is better to take notes or uh, through typing or taking notes like in the paper? This is a huge question I faced as a student um, because um, the iPads and la- laptops are very helpful and productive tools. Um, I wanted to tackle pro- this problem with, uh, from the perspective of psychological aspect. Um, I got a quote, um, quote from Princeton University, um, a professor from Princeton University and UCLA. What they said was that the pen is mightier than the keyboard. Um, meaning to say that writing on the paper helps us memorize um, for the test or in any form of yeah, memorization. Um, paper note takers, brains are working to digest, summarize, and capture the hurt of information. And that's really great in writing tools. Um, this in turn promotes understanding and retention. So yeah, it helps us memorize. But then, but, 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 um, but if they have a bad handwriting, that's a big question because I personally have a pretty bad handwriting and like some note takers like me argue that they, they are more productive when they type because they can capture the letter much quicker. So uh-huh. I actually think that it all depends on handwriting <laughs> skills. Um, the benefits of typing is that a uh, they can recall better and it's well organized. Uh, Using the computer as a tool for note taking involves um, initial advantage by increasing the amount of information recorded. So it's more productive, but the efficiency is lower. Um, Like Ms. Colleen said, um, when, when you are writing or like writing on a paper, it encodes deeper level. So, you know, um, you know Shuzi, it's a Japanese um, calligraphy tool. Um, you, you write on the paper uh, using a brush. And I have been doing that since uh, when I was elementary school. And I believe that it helped me in, to be a more creative person. And um, Shuzi itself is a combination of arts and study um, or yeah, the information with a blank paper, like blank, just white paper, you can make up anything up until everything you want. So for the younger generation, um, I recommend them to use a uh, blank paper or um, a paper or handwriting skill as a, as a tool. But then for upper batch like me, I strongly le- recommend students to use laptop because uh-huh. it simply is productive. Um, to answer to the second question, um, the regarding the uh, information literacy and the technological literacy, um, in today's era, um, the computer and internet makes up everything. With the use of digital tools, um, the quality of output spikes up. You know, um, mm-hmm. you can look up like websites or um, documents using words, Excel. Um, yeah. for any students like like me, um, I'm still 16 years old, but I can make I can make up. And any man like up until like old generation, 
and mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's really great but then you need to take note that um there is a fake news and uh you need to have a skill to manage um to identify if this is trustworthy or if the quality is good um the information literacy and the techno technological literacy is um how you can communicate with others so it's also a skill that you need to master without this um the students what they what the students face is just a danger it's a danger to use technology without knowing anything so i believe this is the answer from me <laughs> thank you wow thank you so much Ms. Misaka. that's a very nice sharing and how i wish i can say well i'm 16 years old and i have this perspective but it's really nice to hear from you from a perspective of a high school student that you are telling us yes writing is good but at the same time having this technological advancement will lead us to a much better product or better output as a student mm -hmm. that's really great i really like your perspective as a 16 year old student <laughs> yeah. okay well well that's it but yeah it's really nice um talk from Ms. Kerlin and Ms. Misaki, and also to our two other speakers, Mr. Ryan and Mr. Doms. But we will now proceed, we will now be proceeding to our five minute break. Okay, so our time right now, let's have a centralized time. Our time right now is, let me check, it's already 17.55. It's 5.55. Let's all come back at, um six i'm um, sorry like let's go back to six o'clock or 601 okay 601 you don't need to leave the room just turn your microphone and video off okay okay see you later, so great guys. see you later guys
Hi everyone, sorry to keep you waiting. So this is Jace. Before we officially continue to the second part of our program, let me just quickly check if everyone is back in, okay? So mm -hmm. again, we do have our two hosts, which is myself and Roma, and then we have mm -hmm. our dear four guests, which is uh, Sir Ryan, Ms. Perlene, Sir Doms, and so as Ms. Saki-san, am I correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. At this point, I would also like to acknowledge the audience and other staff of Grandline who helped us make this possible. Thank you so much for attending the session. Mm -hmm. so, uh, how was everyone's break? Good. Good. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh. I like that short laugh. So it was quite a short breather. Okay. Nonetheless, let's keep the vibe alive and continue. Oh, at this point for our last session, okay, we would like for everybody, uh, for all of our guests to interact with each other. So if you do have a comment from the answer of the other guests, go ahead and do so. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Mr. O, go ahead. Yeah, so as we move on towards the end of the program, this part will be solely focused on all of you exchanging your ideas or maybe having debates, having debates on one's idea and another idea. I'll, we will be so excited to listen to everyone. Okay, so the situation that we are right now certainly open our minds to different kinds of initiatives. And studying and working at home become the sole option. Now the question number three for our, for our program is that what education can be provided at home and what education requires going to school? Do you think when restrictions or the lockdown is already lifted, should there be a new norm? As they say, after the lockdown, there will be like a new normal or should we stick? with the usual educational system. We would love to hear your points or your discussions about this, and you can have a good exchange of ideas or maybe a debate about this. Who would like to start first? <laughs> okay. okay, Mr. Doms. Yeah, um, thank you. Um, we, we could not change the educational system or the curriculum for that matter. Um, due to lockdown or the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, no? we still have to go on with um, the national curriculum, uh, the school curriculum. But of course, um, the pandemic has taught us uh, parents, teachers, to try on alternative modes no, of continuing the learning of uh, the children. No? 
um, though they don't go to school, but learning does not stop no? or education does not stop. So for these um, uh, alpha generation, uh, the preschool, and I think um, the, the parents has uh, a great role in um, the, uh, the education, uh, continuing education of uh, their children. So especially for the young kids, uh, uh, teachers, uh, the, the parents I mean can teach the social skills, uh, the life skills, which I mentioned a while ago uh, as one of the three 21st century skills. So life skills, like even in cooking. So the parents can teach the kids how to cut vegetables, wash the dishes, wash plates, and um, also like teaching the, the kids their hobbies, hobbies of reading, hobbies of writing. Uh, and in there, and also the bond between parents and um, children will be, be stronger, right? Um, because in the normal conditions, somehow technology seems to alienate no? society, mm -hmm. al alienate friends, <laughs> but, and the members, the family members, because they don't have social interaction anymore, no? Uh, but they have with the te technology. So I guess at home, uh, parents have a greater, uh, greater role in developing the, the life skills, social skills of um, their children, no? teaching mathematics, yeah. teaching science, um, the everyday uh, phenomena, you know, boiling water, <laughs> uh, those <Yeah>. things. <laughs> Actually, we go yes. old school. Is that what you're saying, Sir Doms? Mm -hmm. Okay. We go yeah. old school. <laughs> but okay. what is, uh, but Sir Doms um, and, and the rest of the guests, uh, this is a situation that is ongoing, right? And then um, what is being suggested is for us to increase our communication amongst each other more. But what can you say that we are really able to do that? because of this kind of technological tool. So, in fact, I'm sure that earlier it was said we are in no means to demonetize um, the technological tool. But the tools that we have right now are the same means why we're able to connect with each other more. So should we really lessen the use of it or enhance the strategy of using it? Um, let yeah. me answer. I want to answer. Um, I think it's a matter of control. Mm. Um, the difficult thing that is happening right now is technology is controlling the people. It is not the people controlling technology, especially among the children. You know, mm. we use technology to communicate, but more children, the number of children increasing that don't know how to talk to you looking at the person in the eye. You know, they don't know how to talk to a person with eye-to-eye -eye contact. Mm -hmm. You will observe, you know, I, I face many kids usually and they don't mm -hmm. have that life skill. It's a life skill actually. And that's mm -hmm. what yeah. technology made them. Many people have a thousand friends on, on Facebook, but they have a very few friends in real life, you know. Exactly. I think it's a matter of control. It should not be technology controlling the people. It should be people controlling technology yeah. uh i'm a i'm a bit like um uh, what do you call this affected by that because i can say also i'm one also i'm one of the people <laughs> who are also addicted when it comes to facebook and instagram <laughs> yeah but you're actually right about about that point how about the others how about our students how about from miss misaki what's your okay. side about this one Okay, uh, I, I would like to answer to the uh, question. What education can be provided at home? I, I'd say like um, a worksheet or productive uh, test, uh, like productivity wise, it works. But then what kind of education requires going to school? Um, I, I'd answer the same um, 
yeah same solution as miss karen um mental development like um in my school we call it five c's um character collaboration commitment mm -hmm. to achieve creativity and competence we compete with others because we go to school we develop our characters um because we are in in a class a class is like a society for a students and we all we lost a class or we lost a family because of this pandemic i'm not saying we lost like i'm just saying that there is not much bonds compared to before so um to answer to miss jay's question um i need i need to have a better solution or a, a tool which uh we can be connected using it may be a form of technology like social media or like there's a there's an app called um netflix we can mm -hmm. watch netflix together um no matter how how much distance we may have and we can have, play some games together and online connects people i guess but then mm -hmm. we need to develop our mental yeah mental yeah study learning mm. my answer for that. sorry yeah thank you so much mm -hmm. yeah we are well actually you're talking about netflix well i'm just curious because we are already in this modern age and you're actually this generation are the big audience of the millions or let's say billions of online influencers would yeah. you also agree that this is also like a good source of mm -hmm. education for the new generation right now. Do you think this is kind of like a more than a positive side or more on a negative note? How, what's your idea about this one? Online influencers, that's just YouTube vloggers. Yeah, um, it can be both. Uh, for instance, I use uh, Netflix, YouTube, and some uh, Spotify songs to study English. Because it's more, yeah, it's, it's alive. The, the the words they use is alive and that can be a source to for learning for me to learn so it, it can be beneficial however if you use too much um if you are out of control for for the use of technology then it can harm you as well okay how about for our x and y and i don't know w generations here what can you <laughs> say about this one how about mr ryan what can you say? You belong to Generation yeah. Y? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. With, okay. With regards to the question, I do believe that home is the root of all forms of education. Uh, it may be like uh, the values of education, the affective, the psychomotor skills, like teaching the kids cooking, baking. Um, uh, that is psychomotor. Then cognitive thinking, real life problems in, in the house. I think parents could do this kind of activity that help them educate their kids. And um, with regards to what education uh, for going to school is, uh, I think um, for school, this is a formal setting where knowledge and skills and acquisition of skills are used, like principles, theories, and uh, yeah. Then if you talk about me, if you ask me about, uh, about the pandemic, uh, since I'm working with the Department of Education, uh, they, because of the COVID threat, they are making strategy uh, with regards to the contact time during the opening of the school year. Uh, the the undersecretary under said yesterday that um, it is not needed, to, the, needed for the children to go to school face to face they are making intervention, whether online or like, uh, I'm happy because uh, for now, because of pandemic, I have discovered the Zoom app. <laughs> the Zoom app, I guess. The Everyone. Meeting, yeah, honestly speaking. Everyone. Yeah. Uh, every time, since I am the coordinator in our town for the science uh -huh. coordinator in our town, we have the teleconference using the Zoom. Uh, mm -hmm. making modules for the children to use during the opening of the school year. If this uh, pandemic will continue, then obviously making strategy on how to uh, lessen the burden for the kids to go to school, uh, making mm -hmm. uh, essential competencies only to be taught for the children. Uh, 
it may be they have also option that they have two times a week like that that's uh there will be modification of uh classes i don't know if how will they apply it during the opening of the school year but at this time they have uh surveys assessment mm -hmm. with regard to the gadgets the technology that teachers have their in school or at home pupils if mostly of pupils most of the pupils have their own gadgets to use ipads cell phones then they can have to formulate strategy on what they will be using for the opening of the school year that's it yeah you know, um sir ryan earlier uh i like it i like the opening that you gave that uh my understanding that the base foundation of education is continued at home so i'm yeah. i'm also curious how are we going to partner with parents uh, such as Ms. Carleen? And then, because definitely there is a divide, right? The last thing that we want is that the specific foundations of an educator be somehow miscommunicated because there's a different understanding to a parent. So how are we making, how are we going to make sure that that connects? If we are reconsidering that in the future, not just for this pandemic, but if we will be in the same situation, we will be engaged in the same kind of initiative again. We're in, we're gonna do online education, right? So how is the, how do you think the education department could partner also with the parents to make sure that the delivery to the students is aligned with the target? Uh, in our case for the Department of Education, for now they have assessment online with regards to the recent uh, innovations that they have uh, furnished in the field, like uh, the availability of technology. Uh, as, as part of that team in making uh, some modules for our different division, for the different competencies to be taught for the uh, entire school year, Yes. With regards to the parents' um, um, uh, collaboration with the teachers, I think yes. this thing will follow after the formulation of the strategy that they will be making during the, yes. what do you call that, during the opening of the school year. For now, uh, they are just assessing whether technology is available in school and at home. So mm -hmm. they provide online for teachers to... Um, check whether these things are available so that they can make strategy or intervention with regards to the problem. Because, you know, mm -hmm. uh, honestly speaking, in the Philippines, uh, we, we, are, we are always considering the uh, access and resources of the yeah. children. Yes. Like, like us, we are using internet. Not all of us have internet at home. Yes, that's Not true. all of us have There's gadgets that. at home. Okay. There's still an undeniable gap on the availability of resources and it differentiates in every country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, a different kind of understanding is needed, different kind of strategies. Understand. Yeah. Thank you, Soraya. Okay, thank you so much. So like, okay, let's just go on a lighter note. Since we were talking about, you know, new discoveries, like Mr. Ryan said a while ago, you were able to discover Zoom, using Zoom in this lockdown what are the lifelong yeah. skills that you discovered that you can do in this lockdown that you were able to ah oh, i know how to do this I, I was able to learn how to do this because of this lockdown period me i'm so proud of myself i learned how to cook how about you <laughs> <laughs> i'm proud of myself i learned how to cook because of this lockdown and save money how about the others Uh, in my case, I do I do my gardening because that is one of my hobbies. And of course, uh, I am making modules a part of our instruction for the opening of the school year. That's it. Wow, gardening. Wow. How about Miss yeah. Yasaki? What um, have you discovered? Skill? Uh, it's just my personal, how, I don't know, like things that I, I'd like to do. Um, I, I like to do the programming, like to, to create websites and... Yeah, things like that. So I developed some websites and services. So that wow. 
Are you I, like I, a future a future vlogger? Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you will become one, just tell us so and we will like and subscribe your channel. Okay, thank you. <laughs> How about Sir Dom? Uh, being a Generation X again, sorry. <laughs> I still rely on the traditional yes, uh, PowerPoint and the word to do. Um, I'm sorry to say that I was really affected. I, I developed anxiety and mm -hmm. uh, I, I was uh, disoriented on my work because you know, the normal uh, functioning of my bodily system and thinking was totally disrupted. So I, I, I couldn't think well. And uh, so it took some time for me to really <laughs> recover <laughs> the, the downside of uh, yeah. much of technology but um, I mean uh, for parents as I've uh, heard from uh, Miss Misaki she have done uh, programming but for parents like I say going back to the activities at home if they have like toy cars and toy robots <laughs> uh, so the, the parents can tinker with it and learn no, the science of it, no? the yeah. technology, the science behind yeah. each technology, each gadget. No? So, so that students, I mean, children will really appreciate no, uh, how important technology is. It's not just no, for communication per se, but no, um, Certainly. the innovations yeah. no, and the... Um, technological uh, breakthroughs it could uh, yeah. offer to the econ economic uh, stability of the country. Okay. Yeah, totally. I agree with you, Mr. Doms. And yeah, even though you're Generation X, I know that you can still cope with the technological advancements right now. <laughs> um, excuse course, me. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yes? Um, I just yes? want to add something. You know, we are talking yeah, about sure. education for a very long time. And I think we should really, it was correct when Sir Dom said we should really uh, redefine what we believe about what education is. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. um, it's really hard for a child that you push them to go to school to be educated. Wherein it was really brilliant when Sir Ryan said that the home is the root of all forms of education. And as a parent myself, um, I hope there, there will be many parents who will watch this. Um, there is a proverb in the Bible that says, train a child, uh, train a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Mm -hmm. You know, many kids are very drawn to iPad and tablets because their parents is also drawn with parents with tablets and iPad. You know, mm -hmm. as early as a child, as a baby, you know, the first time a child knows how to grip they don't grip toys. They actually grip the cell phones because their parents always hold the cell phone. You know, if you will observe kids, they are so drawn to the cell phone because their parents are always holding the cell phone. And they are drawn to YouTube because they always see their parents watch YouTube. You know, parents should actually, in, in education, parents is a big part of one's education. You know, um, it actually, it is actually my commitment to the Lord and to my children that we parents is the primary educator of my kids, not the school, not the Sunday school teacher, not the teacher at their schools, because we are with our kids 24-7 and we have the bigger impact to our children's lives. And I just want to encourage the parents, all, I know it is really hard to be on lockdown, you know. It's very hard to divide your time being a mom and being at work. Example for me, I write. So it's really difficult to be an author and a cook at the same time. But if we will commit that life, because that child is a gift, and they are humans, you know. They are a social being. I was really saying amen when Sir Dom was saying that because that is really true. That is one of the truths of education, that you are educating someone who is human. You are not raising a robot that you will just put this and put this and put it and push the button and it will work. It's not. They are human beings. And they have life. And 
they deserve all the best that we can give. They might not graduate in a big university, but that relationship of educating them, not just those that will blow their mind, but the simple things, why there is a rainbow, why the water is boiling, how the washing machine operates, how to cook. Those are types of educations that are, you know, priceless and unfathomable. And the journey of educating someone who comes from your body, you know, it's so priceless. That's why I really appreciate teachers and educators who treat their children like their own child. You know, it's, you know, you can pay them. You can pay that service. It's a service yeah. of love and it should come from parents. That's why I'm really worried about this new normal because that relationship, because there are kids that that relationship, they only gain from their teachers because they don't have parents at home. And I'm worried about those kids you know so we are praying i am praying actually that i i don't want to really adjust to this new normal because there are so many lives that are stake yeah so yeah i'm just sharing my heart mm -hmm. <laughs> and i hope and for the, yeah. um to make the children want to go to school um as a as a student um as a student um i am uh, it is important to pursue why they are learning, yeah. like, not to go to university or to to gain a good job, um, but like what they want to do in the future yeah. and a vision with the dreams, goals, and yeah, what they want to do. If they know it, then the learning can be more exciting and wonderful. Um, it's just my experience, but yeah. That can be a reason for the presence of education, I think. <laughs> wow, thank you so much. I mean, it mm. was really a good share. How about Mr. Doms and Mr. Ryan? Would you like to add more? Yeah, okay. uh, go, um, going back. OK, sir. Uh, Come on, sir. Yeah, Go. as I mentioned about holistic education, so it means a personal development of the child, no? self-development. And the child has to understand the meaning and purpose no? of learning. As Ms. Misaki has said, they have dreams uh, eventually in their life. So young as they are, no, if now they have understood why are th they need to develop skills like the, their emotions, they have to control, they have to be sociable, likable, they have to respect others, no? and they have to be physically healthy, spiritually strong. So you know, that would really prepare them you know, when they go to school. So they are confident, they are a, a strong person that can survive. You know? In the in the school system, we're in different personalities already. So as um, Sir Ryan has said, uh, as we agree that the school, <laughs> the home is the foundation of all the uh, knowledge, the skills, and the you know, the the values, the virtues. So um, by then, I would say holistic education would produce a digital, no? a digital citizen and a global citizen, no, for that matter. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So Ryan, would you like to add something? Okay, I'd, like, I'd like to add in general, and um, after the discussion of our experts, I agree with Mom Carlene that technology really affects performance of the kids. Since I'm teaching the gifted class in our school, one of our dilemmas is the overuse of, of uh, using gadgets. They tend to use gadgets all the time, not giving enough time for studying. That's why they, um, they earn low grades. So in my case, I, I don't have problems with technology as long as it is in moderation and use it properly. That's all. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay, so Ms. J? Yeah, um, I think it will all boil back earlier from the answers of most of our guests. It will all boil back to, it's not exactly technology that's out of control. 
it should be the parent or the teacher or the child that should learn the controls. The tools should not be limited because learning needs to be forever. It needs to have a good foundation that starts from the home, extends to the school, and even go back at the home. Um, I would say that it's not, it starts with the childhood, but until we grow up, at, uh, uh, as long as we aspire to be something, we should continue to learn. And you should, that a child will only learn through a good example. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, okay, now we will be having our Q&A that will involve the audience, okay? We would like to ask the participation of our audience and allow you to ask your questions after listening to the shared insights of our dear guests. As you, uh, as you ask your question, please state your name first and the name of the guest you would like to ask. If it is not specific, you could just simply say it would be for any to ask, okay? So let's start. Who would like to ask a question first? Can I ask a question? Sure, is this Miss May? Yes, hi, okay. I'm Miss May and I am a communications coach at Grand Line and uh, right now working from home. So this question, um, I'd like to say first before the question that uh, this discussion was very helpful and very informative. Thank you very much to all your input, your insights, and of course your um, well-researched, I think, well-researched, um, and this has a very good foundation really. Thank you very much. So my, the question is really directed to towards everybody. Um, so my question is, how can we be able to build the gap between the fundamentals required, uh, like life skills and being uh, a holistic, uh, the holistic approach, um, learning from home, and things like that? Those are fundamentals. These were this these were taught to us when we were kids from Generation X. So how do we bridge the gap? between that, the fundamentals that are required, and the fast-paced movement of technology so that other generations cannot or are not left behind. And the ones that are advancing fast, fast uh, are still grounded towards the fundamentals that they need to have within them to become a good global citizen. That's the question. Mm -hmm. Would you who would to... like to answer? Yeah, go ahead. Um, who would like hey. to answer the question? Yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> so you know, it's a bit of difficult question. Um, <laughs> Connecting all the three <laughs> questions. <laughs> Bridging. Okay, so um, I am as again uh, Generation X, so some Generation Y, Generation Z, and Generation Alpha. So four <laughs> generations. So it's, and the, the educational system cannot absorb and accommodate all because we know that the, the national curriculum is dependent on the economic and technological goals or development of the country. All right, so even if you know, uh, technology drives economy, but as we pointed out, there is still a scarcity, you know, there is still that. Uh, problem of accessibility and also inability of these um, technological resources. So striking a balance you know, to bridge the gap between generations to generation is a bit difficult, but uh, teachers and educators have to acknowledge that this is the time of the generation alpha. So mm -hmm. we need to 
pull our efforts, our heads together, no, to transform the educational system. So we know that uh, um, the, uh, each country keeps on revising its curriculum. Nowadays, we have the STEM education, you know, science, technology, you know, engineering, mathematics, and arts, um, STEAM for uh, South Korea, for example, the STEM education for US. And most of the uh, Southeast Asian countries are following the STEM education, you know, but some countries also are moving to STEAM you now with the A, arts. So, uh, slowly, you know, we, we are accommodating the um, technological aspect or component of uh, education you know, with the STEM approach. And um, hopefully, you know, um, of course, um, the teachers you know, would also continue on learning, you know, even if uh, still a majority or quite a big percentage are in the classrooms of my generation. So um, <laughs> it is not uh, still a, um, a an inhibitor, no, rather than. Uh, but now, um, with the, the constant um, changes, reforms of the parents now also have uh, a very great role. No? continue going on uh, giving feedback now to the school system to the educational system of uh, what your children need no? what, what what skills are your no, children needing in order to cope uh, in this uh, technologically driven world so i think so slowly and Little by little, with our concerted efforts, parents, stakeholders, teachers, principals, no? the business community, you know, we can reach that ultimate goal of you know, a digital uh, citizen and a global citizen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Would uh, our other guests like to add to what Sir Dom said? I may want to add something. Um, bridging the gap, you know. I wrote an article about it uh, with that same theme. And I think in order to bridge the gap between the fundamentals and the development of technology, I think we need to go back to the basic actually, which is support system and community. You know, because of the rise of technology, children are being isolated and alienated. You know, they actually lack social skills. They don't know how to talk to each other. You know, it's so funny because sometimes there are kids here. They will uh, tell their child, let's play at three o'clock and they'll just meet somewhere and they'll just play DS. That's the trend now. They're not actually playing. They're just sitting down, connecting infrared or Bluetooth. And they're, that's play, that's game. They're not actually talking with each other. And I think the more we will improve the support system and community of the students, involving parents, um, mm -hmm. especially parents on that um, educational system, I think it, it's, it will actually help because most of the students, they're actually performing not for grades, but mm -hmm. for their parents. You know, I hope this comes across because most children, they perform for their parents, for the approval of their parents, not necessarily for grades because there are so many child who are, you know, if you are familiar with emotional tank or love tank of children, we will go back to the basic that these are human beings you are teaching. And if this emotional tank is not being fulfilled while growing up, you know, it's really hard to bridge the gap between learning and advancing of technology because though, no matter how improved the educational system is, no matter how you give them the best of the best of technology that they can use. If they are not uh, emotionally, spiritually, or relationally motivated to do these things, it will be no, of no help. So yeah, thank you. Okay. Well said. Thank you. Well said, well said Ms. Perlene Sir Doms. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more with what you have stated. It's a really a mixture of both the technical, and professional, and so as the innate relationship that we try our best to keep at home. However, no, 
no family would be a perfect model because we continue to adjust depending on the situation. And for our next question, we do have a question that came from our one of our YouTube viewers. At this point, a parent, uh, our folks from the, uh, the uh, education department, and so as our student could go ahead and answer. Uh, one of our YouTubers did ask, how can you effectively teach your own child or the young ones at home since the new normal is having online classes? especially with preschool and elementary level who believe more on teachers rather than their own parents. So any of you could go ahead and provide your answer. How to teach your child effectively? You know, it all comes back to relationship again. Because I'm wondering why a child will trust the teacher more than their parents. You know, it's a question of credibility. Just like, you know, you can teach a child to say uh, good things if a parent is always saying bad things, you know. So you need to build your relationship with your children. You know, it's like uh, you're telling her not to lie, but you're lying to her face. It's really difficult and it will actually affect not just the kid's learning process, but even the way how he will live his or her life outside. So to answer the question, how to effectively teach your child, I think don't, if you're at home, don't bring the school at home. Okay? Make education feel at home. For example, um, you teach them while playing, you know, you use toys, don't use pen and paper, don't use their books, make make learning fun don't act as a teacher act as just a parent you know enjoying that moment while teaching her it's not always that the goal is not always to teach the goal is uh, the goal is not always for the kid to learn okay the goal is to build that relationship and once that relationship is being built up you know your credibility and you know you will gain her trust and maybe i'm sure the child will trust you, you know. For example, me, I was learned, I learned mathematics the old way. And here in Japan, mathematics is really different. So I can teach my child mathematics, but I can teach her history. You know, don't teach the kids yeah. something that it's not your expertise. <laughs> <laughs> so learning your expertise first. However, the target is really general education, right? So if let's say eventually we will be opening up to the idea of online schooling. How can we also train ourselves so that the, the, the other aspects that the child needs to learn can also be you should You should do it together. Oh. No. Yeah, do it together. You know, once you have the grasp of that technology that the child is using, you can do it alone. Just you and your kid and then later on once you have the grasp of the technology that they are using you know you have that credibility to your child that we can do it together mm, yeah I, I get your point on that and i want to have the, a strong as a confidence that you have now Charlene, <laughs> so that i can continue yes. to go ahead and extend my uh, expertise but let's go ahead and also ask uh, the perspective of the young ones so, Ms. Akisan, how do you think we can develop our skills so that you or your generation could learn from us better? Um, you as a parent or uh, older generation in general? Adult, maybe. Adult. Um, I do believe that adults know better than young ones because we are much <laughs> less experienced, but then... In some aspect, like for, for me, um, STEM or uh, programming, I think I know much better than adults. Then we can learn from each other. You may be, um, you may much, like you may know much um, more than me in some aspect, but then in, in some aspect, in other aspects, I, I, I might know much better. But then if we teach each other, then we can exchange our opinions and um, yeah, we can improve like to others. So I think um, it 
maybe the same um, answer with Miss Karen and mm. yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. it certainly, yeah. It, I guess it certainly takes a village to raise not just a child, but I think even grown, grown ups itself. Okay. Again, there is no limit in education. We should always be open to it. Okay. So if only we had more time, but I guess that's going to be a reason for another session. For now, let's sum it up. Uh, let's have Miss Rama to go ahead and give the summary. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm beyond sun. And of course, I had a, like a bucket or even not even a bucket, but a ton of information about our topic. And this is very useful especially right now for the aging millennials. There are a lot of aging millennials who are listening right now. So this is a very useful information. And I believe that, you know, Generation Alpha students are skilled in navigating digital tools and have a way of thinking digitally. So I guess maybe in the near future, we need to cope with maybe a new reality show entitled Keeping Up with the Alpha Millennials. And yeah, we need to keep up with the alpha millennials right now because there are lots of changes and developments that we need to somehow buckle up and know the different learning, with different ways of learning. So, well, I believe today that we have also a word or thought of the day from Ms. J. Yes, it was really hard because I am um, surrounded by expertise from the highest to lowest of generation. Okay, me belonging also on the highest generation. <laughs> but our word of thought of the day is education will never disappear. It will just take up different forms suited to the generation or situation. So honestly, with Grand Line, it's although our target is more on the higher generation, we target to be part of shaping the future of education. We wanna set no boundaries the diversity of time and place, mentoring importance, and student ownership of their program or curriculum will be our must. Because honestly, for our real success, it is your improvement. It is your business English language improvement. So we hope to see you again, Ms. Rama. Yeah, um, we would like to thank our guests and to everyone who joined us, of course, including our technical staff, this will not be impossible without each of you. And we are looking forward to seeing you again on our next online salon. Thank you so much for watching us, but we will appreciate it more if you can leave a comment, a message, or any suggestions for any possible good topics for our next program. And please don't forget to like, Give us a two thumbs up, like, you know, like a vlogger right now. There's a flash on your screen. Subscribe our YouTube channel and follow our Facebook page. And we do really appreciate that. And please don't forget to like and subscribe, of course. And leaving you, our famous company's tagline, success is dependent on effort. So once again, this is Rama. And I am Jace. Stay safe, Stay safe, everyone. Everyone signing off. Signing off. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Of course.